percent of the population having a recognized diagnosed eating disorder. There are some stats within there that indicate about five to six percent of the population will exhibit binge eating, which is a secondary eating disorder outside of the uh, the anorexic and mm -hmm. the bulimic. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a, another kind of eating disorder caveat into all of the the various types of eating disorders. So we're looking at about two to three percent of the of the population having diagnosed eating disorders. About 5% of the population have diagnosed binge eating issues, binge eating disorders. Of that, it's still somewhere in the neighborhood of about a one to two, one to three ratio between males and females. Okay. But there's kind of a, there's, there's really some hidden numbers in that. And most of those hidden numbers is based off of who do we actually look at in terms of having eating disorder issues and who's who are you who are we more likely to uh kind of point to getting treatment for those eating disorder issues okay and it goes into uh i think it was probably like 2008 2009 when the body positivity movement kind of started picking up in terms okay. of trying to uh, recognize that there was abnormal stresses on females in particular to mm -hmm. look a certain way right. based off of the, the models that were being portrayed as this is what the ideal body image happens to be. And so with that, we have to remember is that, that two to that, two to one, three to one ratio in between males and females in terms of that overall percentage of population that would exhibit anorexia or bulimia is kind of skewed because a lot of males would slide underneath the, the radar as the, as cool. the saying goes, uh, as to whether or not they would actually get treatment and be recognized as having mm -hmm. an eating disorder. Binge eating is a, is a whole other issue because most people would not actually kind of seek out treatment for having mm -hmm. binge eating because it wasn't really recognized as having a, an issue. Okay. Sounds good. And so even though we indicate like four to five, 6% of the population would exhibit a binge eating issue, it's kind of a, it's more of an estimate than an actual uh, empirical number. Mm -hmm. But with all of that kind of as background, disorder side of the body image issues. Right. Unfortunately, that's kind of what everybody ends at. Right. But is if you look at any of the the social media posts, uh, if you look at any of like the the YouTube video, the title pages on the YouTube videos, or any of the uh like I said, the the media posts, there is uh kind of a underlying almost biased idea about what is good body versus bad body. Sure. And that leads to a whole other issue in terms of what's referred to as a distorted body image. And distorted body image is nothing new. A few moments later. Image. And that distorted body image can be regional body image or it could be full body image. And so that'd be like something like, uh, I don't like the way my, my arms look, or I don't like the way that my, my hips look as a body regional, or just the total, I don't like how I look relative to what everything else tells me I should look like. And so that is kind of where we're at in terms of understanding the, the statistics of what's going on. Those statistics actually will change based off of age, where there is some indication that for certain populations, that 50% can go up to 70, 75%, mm -hmm. particularly with uh, adolescence, young adulthood, so what everybody refers to like the teenage years, 
that time, kind of time frame, that puberty time frame, particularly for females. And that has to do with social cueing and uh, media expectations cultural expectations, familial expectations that get internalized as to, okay, this is what I should be looking like. For sure. I'd actually really like to touch on that too, because um, I had social media like my beginning high school years. And um, after some time, I realized that I spent a lot of time looking at all these girls on Instagram and without even wanting to kind of wanting now, without even wanting to kind of feeling like I was comparing myself um, to these girls. And I even even attempted it again in my young adulthood. Now I'm 23 and I try to going back into Instagram um, and I'm really into fitness, too. So I'll try to look at these fitness pages because I like seeing like workouts and all that. But you kind of start getting into like, oh, is that how I'm supposed to look like? And I, you know, you you want to think like everybody has their own um, thought of how fit they should look like. And it's different for everybody, but I, you can tell yourself that, but then you see all these girls on Instagram and you're like, oh, I, I, I thought I was fit or think I wanted to look like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I've unfortunately strayed away from that social media again for that for that same purpose because I felt like it was kind of unhealthy just having set those expectations because I was seeing um all these all these females and I I know that we do also try to we focus on females because I do I mean the statistics, statistics say that the females do get affected a little bit more but I more recently also been seeing a lot of males maybe they don't express it as as easily as a female might.